We are in my garage and I am going to walk you through a couple of things that I've been working on. I'm working on shelves in the background, that's why it looks a little bit disorganized. I'm usually facing a different way than I am now. Um, I've got some things that I have to explain. This is my bench. This is the one I made for a series, for a video series. And here is where my drawer is ultimately going to go. So there's some changes that need to take place to this workbench as I'm working through establishing my garage, making it more organized and making it suit me. But there are some things that are non-negotiables and one of them is where I hang my saws. For the last 50 years, I've hung my saws here. I've got three saws that I rely on, a 10 inch, a 12 inch, and a 14 inch. So they're the ones that I rely on all the time. So I usually put a screw, I've got a two inch screw with a one inch uh, tube that you just get this tubing for your fish tank or something like that, it's just plastic tubing. And I screw that into the side of the bench. I've tried dowels, they don't work, they don't last. And so this is why I do it this way. If you like it, you can do it too. What I'm gonna do is show you what I'm looking for. I want my saw to hang on here. But when I just screw the screw into the side of the bench, and I don't have anything here to stop it from bouncing off. If I'm pounding, doing some shaking, this can jump off. So I've made these little things here. I've taken these off my old bench and these slot right on top, but they swivel up out of the way just enough for me to uh, be able to retrieve my saw and put it back easily. So I haven't found anything that works better than this and I'm gonna show you what I did. So bearing in mind that my drawer is governing where the saw is going to hang, I want this horn of the handle to be below, but well below the bench. Let the saw hang, and I'm gonna drive this screw into my bench side, like that. Now my saw can hang. Once it's hanging, I make a mark here, like that. And I take the next one, this is my 12 inch, and I put this, try and get the height somewhere like, but it's not, but what I do not want, I don't want the heel of my saw teeth to catch on the saw next to it. So that's, and I'm looking at the height here, so I come up a little bit here, and that's the position of my next one. The, the, rubber, the rubber really does keep the saw safe which is what you want. There's number two. They're hanging fine. One more. This is my big saw. And this one's going here. Let it hang, make sure it's not catching. Keep a little distance. There's my next one. So now I'm ready to do the, the swivel action pieces, and that's where they go. So now every time I'm working, I pull the saw out, get to task, put it back, and it's out of the way. It's not on my bench top. I love that. So these now are going to go on the tops of these, and I'm gonna show you how to make one. Yeah, I've just got a blank of wood. The important thing on this is I didn't make these the same width as my saw handle, the same thickness as my saw handle. I made it under by about an eighth of an inch because it gives me that little bit extra when I'm pulling the saw off the screw head. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, this is the one I want to make. They're all the same. Actually, I've got three saws made by the same manufacturer and the saws are surprisingly the same. They look, they, when you put your hand inside them, and these are actually all the same shape, which is great. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lining up the edge of my block of wood with the horns of the handle, these two extremes here, and then I'm just drawing around this like that. And that does it, and I'm gonna round this as well because I want it to swivel. And then somewhere in here, I'm just eyeballing for a center point for where I'm gonna put my screw and that's going to give me the shape 
and the position of my screw hole. So I'm going to cut this with my coping saw. Like this. Just to take off the bulk of the waste. I've got my coping saw on the push stroke. I find it works great and I can give it more oomph and more power. Nice and simple. There is my piece, and now I want to cut this. I've got to take some off the end of here yet. And I'm certainly not looking for an exact fit. I want it kind of loose. So we're going to file or use the rasp on this now, just to chew up some of this surface. you file to true that up as well. Let's see how we're doing. So we're close. A little bit in the hollow. If you've got a rasp, great. If you haven't, you could just use a piece of sandpaper around a round piece of wood. And once you've got that, the bulk of it out, you can go as I'm going to with a scraper, just a card scraper. So there, that's close enough for the shape I want. So I'm going with a scraper now, just a card scraper, just to clean up this internal curve work. this end here. Go with your file. I'm going into end grain there. Close to. this end. Not much to it, but a great project to keep your tools aligned and in order. So just a few tools, you can do this. So I'm just rounding this here. There it is. So I'm close. I need a little bit more in that midsection. I'm using Sapili, which I think works great for this. It's got good interlocking grain. A little bit of sandpaper. Where's that going? Just take off the RS off the corners. And we're ready to put this one in place. Drill the hole. I'm just drilling a 3 16 hole. And countersinking, just to seat the screw. I want the screw to be below the surface 
uh, of the wood so it doesn't catch the teeth or anything. Great. So now I'm going to just hang the saw. And what I do is I just let it hang so that it's hanging on, on the, the screw nicely and free. And then I take my piece of wood. And what I do is I just keep this slightly off the, the handle of the saw. So the saw is still hanging free and not governed by, by this at all. And then drive my screw here till it's just tight, that's a little bit too tight, so I'm backing off, that's a little too slight, there we go. And that means now that I can swivel this up out of the way, take hold of my saw, put it back, drop it on. And after a while you'll get used to this, you probably won't even need to move that, you'll put your fingers in, just pull it out, drop it back in. But it's handy to have that flex so that you can move it out of the way when you need to. As I said before, this is a non-negotiable for me. I couldn't live without these. Add it to your workshop and I'm sure it'll serve you for your lifetime too.